What's going on everyone? Austin John Please here and today I want to go over some frequently asked questions and help you understand my brand new alpha shiny hunting method for Pokemon Legends Arceus version 1.1 Daybreak. <laughs> Yesterday I put out a video with all of my results and findings and testings of a new method based off of several old findings, but specifically pertaining to massive mass outbreaks, in which it's going to be the fastest way for you to see multiple authentic groups of Pokemon of a secondary horde. I put out the video, and it was a long video, and I was explaining my findings and how I came to them a little bit, a, a little bit in depth, and because of that it was a little bit confusing for some. So in this video, I'm going to make a very streamlined version just going over the method, not at all the findings. And I think that I think that's going to help everyone. Great. First of all, I'd like to answer some questions in regard to how massive mass outbreaks initially spawn. First thing you want to do is you want to plop down a save in Jubilee Village. And then you're going to look at your map. If you're going to be seeing multiple MMOs, you're welcome to now view any here in the Icelands or view any here in the Highlands. If you pay the five agave berries to the Munchlax and you don't see an outbreak you want and reset your game, you're going to be right back here. And those same Pokemon are going to be in the same places with the exact same results. All of the massive mass outbreak is predetermined on this screen. So if you reset from here, you're going to be getting the same exact results. From my rough estimation, I would say there's about a 20% chance that each of the five locations on the map is going to be having a massive mass outbreak. And then you're going to be having, from my guess, about a 10% chance that it's going to have this little, this little glistening icon here. This glistening icon means that you're insured a secondary horde after you clear out the first horde. That secondary horde may either be evolved Pokemon, or alpha Pokemon, or a combination of the two. Pokemon that do not have any icon whatsoever still have a very slim chance to have a secondary horde, and this method will work for those Pokemon as well. And just because some people didn't know, that means that these the this outbreak will drop berries. But great, I'm going to be heading over here to this Electabuzz outbreak. Now, it's my option if I want to put down the save here at the camp or just outside the perimeter of the Electabuzz. You can still just keep loading from Jubilife and from here and the Electabuzz. Any Pokemon that I encounter are going to be authentic every single time that I rezone into the area. Meaning that, you know, all these Bronzors, Rodoms, whatever is going to be here have their own static chance at being a shiny. However, for simplicity, I'm actually going to be coming over here to this patch of grass, and this is where I'm going to be putting down my save. I did not initiate the title that says this massive mass outbreak has been found or whatever else like that. Instead, just right here, and I'm good to go. It's very important that auto saves are off for this. In it, uh, there we go. The, the Pokemon were found that were reported. I'm just going to be using Jet Balls, and I'm going to be catching all of these Electabuzz at this time. Being here in the grass, it's going to make my job very easy. They're not going to see me, especially if they're far away. And if they pose any trouble, I could just run over to them with sticky gloves, or I could run away on Braviary or Rear Deer, and I could come back. Right now, we're not really doing anything related to the method. We're just kind of scoping out what's going on at the same chance that you are going to be getting yourself the secondary horde. After I throw down the Pokeball to catch the last one, oh, not what I wanted, I'm going to head over to this grass, and I'm going to hide down here. Still have not saved the game, but now I see that I have an Alpha Electivire outbreak, one of the largest models in the game and should make catching them very easy. And that's a short outbreak, I believe that was only six. Huge models, very easy to catch. Great, the reported Pokemon seem to be gone. I did not get a shiny, but if I head back to the camp right now and review the Pokemon, we're gonna learn some interesting things here. This outbreak had a total of 10 Electabuzz in the first round. It could be anywhere from eight to 10. And my second round had six Alpha Electivire. Now, these Alpha Electivire are gonna be anywhere from six to seven. There are some reports that a very rare chance at eight. 
However, if we don't just catch all of these Electabuzz and we do different combinations of battling them, we are going to be getting different secondary hordes, each with their own Alpha Electivire outbreak and all of them being absolutely unique. All brand new stats, natures, and a chance to be shiny. This method will only work for Pokemon who will aggro on you and you have the chance to do a multi-battle, a 2v1, 3v1, 4v1. It will not work on docile Pokemon that will not join in a multi-battle. You do have some unique permutations that you could do. So say, for example, you go after a Starly outbreak. If you get a Star Raptor with a Star Raptor and then throwing the Pokeball at a Starly, you can initiate a 2v1 and sort of replicate these steps, but it's going to be extremely inefficient and I do not recommend it. Now that we see the Pokemon and we did not get our desired results, we're just going to turn the game off and turn it back on. If we were to make a chart and visualize what I just did, if you look right up here, on this column that says one, catch all. That's pretty much what I did. I caught each of the 10 Pokemon in the first horde, and then I got my unique Pokemon at the end. So now, what we're going to be doing is a slightly different version of the exact same first horde, except we're going to be knocking out two Pokemon. You're gonna see that they're grouped together here in red. That means it's the first group, and I've denoted KO2 right here. In order to initiate a multi-battle, you want to have several Pokemon that show up with the red icon above them. You weren't supposed to grab that, you're supposed to do a battle. And then once you initiate the battle, you're going to have anywhere from one, two, three, or four Pokemon. You're going to see right here that I only want to knock out two Pokemon. So because of that, all I need to do is enter a battle with two, three, or four. And then from there, if I enter a battle with more than two, I just need to knock out two. At the top right, you see that there's three circles. One of them is grayed out, which means I already defeated that Pokemon. I just defeated my second Electabuzz. And now, if I run away from battle, that would be the exact same thing as if I only initiated a battle with two and knocked out two. So I'm going to run away. The game recognizes that I've knocked out two Pokemon. And what happens in the background is, now it has trouble loading in the Pokemon that's supposed to spawn in. So because of that, it kind of skips some Pokemon in a long series of Pokemon that's supposed to spawn in, which is inevitably going to lead us to unique results, not only in this group of Pokemon, but our next group of Pokemon as well. Therefore, our secondary horde is going to have brand new, authentic, unique Alpha Electivires. As we can see, because for the first time ever, we have an Electivire in that first group. Okay, well that was unexpected, but great. If things get too hairy and you take some damage, just feel free to fly away, let everyone calm down, and then head back over. You can't wait around too long because of the way that these massive mass outbreaks work. You do have an actual clock on you. It's a long clock, so you shouldn't worry too much, but know that if you do flee a little bit, you can't take too long. And once again, after I knock out the last Pokemon, I just want to hide in the bush and wait for the new horde to spawn in. We have four brand new Alpha Electivires. If I were to catch these and compare their stats to the ones that I just caught, I would know for a fact that they're completely new. In addition, I know that only six Pokemon are gonna spawn in. So therefore, after I catch two, I know that I'm gonna be seeing all the Electivires there are. So now there's three on screen in total and no new ones are spawning in. I do not have my desired results. I'm gonna turn the game off and turn it back on. That's now our second test that we did for a different permutation of knocking out versus catching that led us to unique Pokemon. The third test, all I'm going to do is I'm going to initiate a battle and I'm going to knock out three in the same manner that I tried to knock out two previously. I also want to note that if I go to knock out three, but I only start a battle with two, I can just run away from the two and try to initiate a battle with three. That will produce the exact same results. I'm going to see where the other ones fled to. He was right here all along. Let's make sure three are targeting me. I throw down right in the middle, and that should initiate a 3v1. And it does, perfect. Now we're gonna knock out these three Pokemon. All three of them are knocked out. I'm gonna run back to my grass. And you see, as opposed to before, we don't even have the Electivire showing up again. So we know that it's once again 
unique Pokemon that are spawning into here. Because all of these Pokemon are unique, that does mean that we can have a random Shiny show up, that does mean we could have a random Evolve Pokemon show up, and that does mean we can have a random Alpha show up. And after the last one is caught, we're now going to be seeing a new group of Alpha Electivire spawn in. These four. Now again, all I need to do is catch two of them to ensure that I'm going to be seeing all six Pokemon from this outbreak. I caught one. I caught two. We have two new ones spawn in, and as you can see, no new ones are spawning in. We do not have our shiny. Turn the game off. Turn it back on. We just did this method of knocking out three in a single battle. Now we're going to be knocking out four in a single battle. I'm just going to get everyone's attention, throw down in the middle, and start a 4v1. Perfect. After those four are knocked out, all I'm going to do is catch everything else that shows up. And now that they're all caught, the Electivires are going to be spawning in. And these are four unique Electivires from before. If you want to catch them yourself and compare their stats, you're more than welcome to, but I guarantee that they are unique. Two were caught, and now we've seen all the Electivires. We do not have a shiny. Turn the game off, turn it back on. Now getting into our next round of permutations that we can do, we're going to initiate a battle, only knock out two. We're going to wait for the two new Pokemon to spawn in, so we still have that pool of four. And then we're going to initiate another battle and knock out two. So we're going to knock out these two that are symbolized with red, knock out these two that are symbolized with green. Even though I initiated a battle with four, I'm just going to knock out two and run away and we'll be good to go. We wait for the new ones to spawn in. And now we're going to throw down and battle these two. It is very important that when I say to battle these two, you do have to do exactly that. You have to ba battle two at the same time. You can't battle one, knock it out, battle one, knock it out. That will act as the exact same thing as just catching the Pokemon. So it has to be this 2v1 battle because when the battle ends, the game has to see that two Pokemon are missing at the exact same time. That's going to spawn in two brand new Pokemon. From here, we're just going to catch everything again and wait to see our second horde. With the last one caught, we're now going to be getting new Electivirus spawning in. All four of them. Not what I wanted to do. We caught one of them. Now we just need to catch one more to see all of the different Pokemon. We caught it, and that's our sixth Pokemon. We do not have the shiny. Turn the game off. Turn it back on. I'm not going to be continuing demonstrating it because I'm just going to be doing that off camera. Instead, I just kind of wanted to explain the method a little bit more. So now I'm going to be testing a knockout group of three and then a knockout group of three. And with the last one caught, let's see our second horde. One, two, three, perfect. We got our shiny. And now that I've done this permutation of knocking out two and then two, my next one is going to be knocking out two in a 2v1, followed by three in a 3v1. And I'm going to be getting the results of this group. Then I'm going to be knocking out two in a 2v1, four in a 4v1. I'm going to be seeing results of this group, knocking out three and two, seeing the results, knocking out three and three, seeing the results, seeing three and four, seeing the results. After doing this, I'm seeing 10 unique groups of alpha Pokemon. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to recommend just do this. <laughs> and I'm going to stick to what I said before, which after these 10, if it doesn't show up, it's not in the cards. And this is completely foolproof. As long as you follow the method of knocking out the reds in the first group, the greens in the second group, and the whites mean catches, you're going to be completely safe and this is going to work for you. From here, if you want to complicate this, you can. You can complicate this a lot, and that's completely up to you. However, if this is all you want to see, a clarification of everything going on, you're perfectly good. If you now completely understand everything, and you don't want to be confused anymore, you're more than welcome to. But, if you want to learn how to turn this 10 into 25, then you can keep watching. If you don't want to keep, if you're good, if you're good, there's gonna be a, uh, there's gonna be a thing here. Click the thing, new video, go check it out. But if you want to learn more, stick around. 
Okay, great, you decided to stick around, perfect. This is what I just talked about right here, and these are the exact permutations for an outbreak of eight Pokemon. However, if you have an outbreak of nine Pokemon, you're going to have even more permutations available. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, and you're gonna be seeing with nine Pokemon, you could have these 15 permutations. And for 10 Pokemon, you're gonna be having these 19 permutations. The reason that these permutations work and other ones do not is because it all has to do with the last four Pokemon. Anything that you do before entering the last four Pokemon will change the last four Pokemon. Meaning that if I were to look at example number 14 here, it's knockout two and then two and then two. If I did anything within these four, I'm gonna be getting the exact same second horde with no variations to it whatsoever. Likewise, with the nine Pokemon, anything that begins within these last four, not gonna change it whatsoever. And now, instead of it just being the 10 for the eight, for the nine, you could have that 15, and for the 10, you could have these 19. Now, if this is good enough information for you, there's gonna be a little icon here, and you can click away and go watch a different video. But if you wanna learn how to turn it into 71, keep watching. <laughs> Something that I completely glanced over and did not discuss whatsoever in my original video, to not confuse anyone, is going to be a combination of knocking out and catching the Pokemon. So, if I delete these rows, you're now going to be seeing a whole bunch of new stuff. And you're going to be seeing the whites in the middle of the reds and greens and before them and everything else like that. So. You could do a combination of knocking out and catching Pokemon. In this example, number 11, you're going to knock out two, wait for them to spawn in, catch one in the overworld, battle two of them, and then catch these three. This one, you're gonna catch the first one, battle two, catch these. These are going to be, from early findings, all unique permutations. And this is just of the outbreak of eight, meaning that any variations that are initiated within the last four don't count, but as you're gonna see, none of them initiate within the last four. A member of my Discord, Brian Whitting, actually came up with all 79 possible permutations that are going to be knocking out and catching combinations for the group of 10. Now, I have not tested these myself. I do not know if they're going to provide unique results. You're more than welcome to test these things out and try them. Apparently he's writing true and false here. I'm not exactly too sure what the key means. I need to discuss with him about that. But if you wanna try different permutations, you're more than welcome to. I know for a fact these 10 will work. And I know for a fact that these 15 and these 19 will work. Once you start mixing in combinations of knocking out and catching, I cannot guarantee those will work. In theory, they should be brand new, but then again, I have not tested this myself. I cannot speak to those findings or testings. If you wanna experiment with getting into crazier numbers, you're more than welcome to. One last little note here is that I do not recommend this as your primary way to do massive mass outbreaks as I do not think it's fun. However, if there's one specific Pokemon that you want to go after, definitely. This is the fastest way, 100%, to see the most authentic alpha Pokemon of a specific species in the entire game. Significantly faster than zoning in and out for one spawned alpha or static alpha that may occur in the game. Significantly faster than space-time distortions and with a significantly larger pool than we've seen previously. Therefore, many more possibilities, much faster than any way has been found. Well guys, I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.